<laughs> Good morning, Facebook! Or evening. It's 8 o'clock, probably, when you're watching this or when I'm posting it. Um, it's like 4 o'clock right now, but I gotta take, uh, I gotta go pick up my wife at 8 o'clock so I won't be here to record live. So I'm recording early, and I got all my munchkins here, which I wouldn't have if I was recording at 8, because one of them's going to a sleepover birthday party tonight. And I'm like, in the middle of a pandemic? Be careful. But, anyway. Here we are. Facebook, 8 o'clock. We're going to read chapter 27 of the Emerald City of Oz. There's only 30 chapters in this, and this was supposed to be the very last of the Oz books. So, who knows what will happen. Uh, Baum did end up writing eight more books after this. Um, or, yeah, eight more books. There's 14 books total, and this is book six. So, obviously, it wasn't the end. But it sure seemed like it was going to be the end. And, and as we read in the last chapter, there's no plan to really fight back against the invading army and everybody might die. And it was like, this is the saddest book. But let's read together and find out if it gets any better. Because at the end of the last chapter, Scarecrow was like, I, I have a plan. I'm not going to tell anyone because that's how books work. So here's chapter 27. How the fierce warriors invaded Oz. Oh no, scary stuff. The Gnome King and his terrible allies sat at the banquet table until midnight. There was much quarreling between the Growlywogs and Fanfasms, and one of the pea-headed whimsies got angry at General Guff and choked him till he nearly stopped breathing. Yet no one was seriously hurt, and the Gnome King felt much relieved when the clock struck twelve, and they all sprang up and seized their we weapons. Aha! shouted the first and foremost. Now to conquer the land of all. He marshaled his phantasms in battle array, and at his word of command they marched into the long tunnel and began the long journey through it to the Emerald City. The first and foremost intended to take all the treasures in Oz for himself, to kill all who could be killed and enslave the rest, to destroy and lay waste to the whole country, and afterward to conquer and enslave the gnomes, the growlywogs, and the whimsies. And he knew his power was sufficient to enable him to do all these things easily. Next marched into the tunnel the army of gigantic growlywogs, with their grand galloped at their head. They were dreadful beings indeed, and longed to get to Oz that they might begin to pilfer and destroy. The grand galloped was a little afraid of the first and foremost, but had a cunning plan to murder or destroy that powerful being and secure the wealth of Oz for himself. My mighty little of the plunder would the gnome king get, thought the grand galloped. The chief of the Whimsies now marched his false-headed forces into the tunnel. In his wicked little head was a plot to destroy both the first and foremost and the Grand Galapoot. He intended to let them conquer Oz, since they insisted on going first. But he would afterward treacherously destroy them, as well as King Roquat, and keep all the slaves and treasure of Ozma's kingdom for himself. After all his dangerous allies had marched into the tunnel, the Gnome King and General Guff started to follow them. The head of 50,000 gnomes, all fully armed. Guff, said the king, these creatures ahead of us mean mischief. They intend to get everything for themselves and leave us nothing. I know, replied the general, but they are not as clever as they think they are. When you get the magic belt, you must at once wish the whimsies and growlywogs and fanfasms all back into their own countries. And the belt will surely take them there. <laughs> Good, cried the king. An excellent plan, Guff. I'll do it. While they are conquering Oz, I'll get the magic belt, and then only the gnomes will remain to ravage the country. <laughs> <coughs> so you see, there was only one thing that were that all were agreed upon. That Oz should be destroyed. On, 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 the vast ranks of the invaders marched, filling the tunnel from side to side. With a steady tramp, tramp, they advanced, every step taking them nearer to the beautiful Emerald City. Nothing can save the land of Oz, thought the first and foremost, scowling until his bare face was as black as the tunnel. <laughs> the Emerald City is as good as destroyed already, muttered the Grand Galapoot, shaking his war club fiercely. In a few hours, Oz will be a desert, said the Chief of the Whimsies with an evil laugh. My dear Guff, remarked the Gnome King to his general, at last my vengeance upon Ozma of Oz and her people is about to be accomplished. You are right, declared the general. 
Ozma is surely lost. And now the first and foremost, who was in advance and nearing the Emerald City, began to cough and to sneeze. The tunnel is terribly dusty, he growled angrily. I'll punish that Gnome King for not having it swept clean. My throat and eyes are getting full of dust and I'm thirsty as a fish. The Grand Gallopoot was coughing too and his throat was parched and dry. What a dusty place, he cried. I'll be glad when we reach Oz and get a little drink. Who has any water? asked the Whimsy Chief, gasping and choking, but none of his followers carried a drop of water. So he hastened on to get through the dusty tunnel into the land of Oz. Where did all this dust come from? demanded General Guff, trying hard to swallow, but finding his throat so dry he couldn't. I don't know, answered the Gnome King. I've been in the tunnel every day while it was being built, but I never noticed any dust before. Well, let's hurry, cried the General. I'd give half the golden Oz for a drink of water. The dust grew thicker and thicker, and the throats and eyes and noses of the invaders were filled with it. But not one halted or turned back. They hurried forward, more fierce and vengeful than ever. And that is the end of chapter 27. How the fierce invaders... How the fierce warriors invaded Oz. <laughs> Tomorrow night, join us for chapter 28. Annabelle's laughing because she thinks she already knows how it's going to go, and she's probably right. Cause I chapter, like this book better Because chapter 28 is entitled... How they drank at the Forbidden Fountain. I like this a lot better now. Annabelle's very happy now. She's like, this book isn't so sad anymore. It was terribly depressing. <laughs> it was terribly depressing, she says. I do hope you'll join us tomorrow night to see how the invaders get uh, thwarted in their attempt to invade Oz. Uh, 8 o'clock, Facebook. Won't quite be live again because i got to pick up my wife at work at 8 o'clock again tomorrow night. But I'll post it around 8 and I hope you'll join us then. And if you want to join me at 9 o'clock tonight, I will be on my band's uh, Facebook page, The 1947 California Cupcake Company, going live with a tribute to John Lennon for his 80th birthday party. A uh, bunch of Beatles songs, John Lennon songs. We're doing the entire Sgt. Pepper album. Uh, it should be a fun time. I hope you'll join us uh, here tomorrow night and there if you're interested in music. Good night, everyone. <laughs>